The stack widget allows you to stack widgets on top of one another. So instead of laying out widgets next to each other on top of one another, like columns or rows, Stack lays out its children on top of one another. So let's take a look at how this works and then review the five main layout patterns you'll be using with the stack widget. Okay, so let's go into our widget tree right here and we've got our stack right now. We've got one container. Let's dump another container in here. So I'm just gonna command D duplicate it. And one thing to keep in mind with a stack is the stacking order. And that is, it's the opposite of how it looks. So the bottom is the top. So the top widget right here is the bottom widget. So if we come into this top one right here, and let's change our color to this orange, we can't see it because it's on the bottom. Or as I like to remember it, the bottom is the top. That is, the widget that's on the bottom of this stack in the widget tree is actually the top. The bottom is the top. And when you add widgets, they will be added to the top of the stack which of course is the bottom. Okay, so here's our stack widget, and we only have a few properties. First, we've got width and height, and we need these because a stack is going to be sized to its children. It wants to be the size of the children. That's unless it has a constraint coming down from a parent. And if you don't know what that means, you can go back and watch the video about the number one layout rule in Flutterflow. But here, we don't have any constraints that's making our stack bigger, so it's being sized to the children and we only have two containers here both of them are 100 by 100 so the stack is 100 by 100 so let's make the width infinite width and infinite height so we can start seeing some of these properties all right next we've got the default child alignment and that means once you dump a child in here where will it go now of course where will it go will depend on the actual size of the stack so it'll be aligned inside these parameters. So we don't have any default child alignment, so it's just gonna add it in the top left. But if we put it in the center, then that's how they'll be laid out. Now, this is just the default child alignment. You can override these. So let's come over to this container right here, the one that we can see, the one on the top, and of course the top is the bottom. And we can give it its own alignment and put it up in the top left and give our other container right here an alignment of bottom right. So then if we add in another container in here, it's going to be added to the center and let's give it another color so we can see. And that's of course because we've got our default child alignment. Okay, so that's it. That's all the properties of the stack widget. But of course we wanna know like how do designers normally use this? And that's what we're gonna look at now. And the first way is called hinting. All right, we're here in a banking app, and in this card section right here, let me show you, we've got a stack here. And how this stack is functioning is we've got a list view, and then we've got this container which has a gradient on it, hinting. Now, what this is doing, it's gently indicating that there's content off screen that you can scroll and access. And this isn't just aesthetic. This is hinting at the content. All right, let's look at another design pattern. This pattern is called consolidation. And the idea behind this pattern is when you have more visual information, more widgets, then you have space on the page. So one way you can handle that is with scrolling. So you put the content off screen. But here's another way. It's using the stack to layer them on top of one another, to consolidate them. So here we've got a stack with these three cards and they're all visible to the user. So the information is still there, but they're consolidated by using a stack. And this is a great technique to use when you've run out of space because one bad pattern that designers can often fall into is filling up all the space, not having any white space, room for things to breathe. And so it ends up being cluttered. Well, this is one pattern to help you avoid the clutter, consolidate things into a stack. That's the second pattern. Next up, legibility. Here, we've got a stack of a background image and a gradient that also has a text in it. Now, you can do this with just nested containers, but you can also do it with stack, it's up to you. But the idea of this pattern is where you have an image that you want it as a background, but it would be too busy for the type to sit on top of. So you need to add a gradient or a fill color to brighten or darken, depending on if your text is black or white, in order to have the type be legible. Here's another example. So 
So here's another great example where you've got an image that fills the whole space and there's a great part on the image away from the focal point. Say in this image, you've got the focal point of these buildings and you've got trees, which are secondary in the visual hierarchy of the photo. And you say, oh, this would be a great spot for type, but it's too bright. Well, by placing it in a stack and adding a gradient like we have here, you've got much better contrast. And so if we just delete this gradient, you can see that the type is unreadable. All right, next up, layering. Another really common stacking pattern is when you just have a lot of stuff that needs to be layered on top of one another. So here we've got this card type design and we've got some type, a background image, a background color, a logo here that all need to be layered on top of one another. You stack for this. Next, we've got peaking. So here's our stack right here. So we, in this whole section, we've got a stack. We've got this background image, another plain background color back here. And then we've got the user's photo right here peeking into this background image or peeking out of however you want to think about it. Now, this is purely an aesthetic technique. It's a really fun design tool to have in your arsenal because typically when you're designing, and this is true on the web, you normally think in two main categories of when you're placing content place content next to each other, whether that's on the top or the bottom or to the right or to the left or place it inside. So you could have an image and some type on top of that image. But one great technique is to split the difference and have content peek into other sections to overlap. It gives it a real dynamic feel. You'll often see this with products where you might have a watch on a colored circle background, but the watch will peek outside of it. A really fun and dynamic technique. And that's the stack widget in Flutterflow.